like to start by talking about uh, the injury of the thoracolumbar posterior ligamentous complex, a bibliometric and critic, uh, critical literature review presented by Rami Lima. First off, I would like to give a brief introduction about the posterior ligamentous complex, which is a complex of ligaments that include the supraspinous ligament, the interspinous ligament, the ligamentum flavum, and facet capsular ligament. The PLC protects the spine from excessive movement, and as such, its disruption can cause delayed kyphosis, chronic back pain, and it may benefit from surgery when injured. In 2005, the thoracolumbar injury classification system was the first classification to formally cite the integrity of PLC as major determinant of structure, uh, fracture stability, and treatment. Since then, there have been a growing number of uh, publications on PLC injury of the thoracolumbar spine. The primary purpose of this work was to provide contact and bibliometric analysis of literature on PLC injury and thoracolumbar injury, uh, trauma, aiming to help understand trends and shortcomings to, uh, and to guide future research in this area. So what is bibliometric analysis? To put it simply, it's a field that uses quantitative means to evaluate academic productivity. And it's through huge databases that give us uh, data about hundreds and thousands of paper that could be summarized into a simple CSV format, which can be used to analyze huge amounts of data uh, to find the citation uh, factor and impact factor of uh, different authors and publications. Over here, we can see a simple flowchart that goes over the methodology and results and how we were able to obtain this data. And it would be further explained in a series of charts uh, when it comes to the results. So we would start off by the first step, which is the identification process, uh, which was done by taking the data off uh, Scopus database. Then the filters that uh, were applied that were applicable to our search screening of such papers manually to make sure that we include only the papers that we need. And then coming to the point of the results, which were used to assess two different things. The first topic was the bibliometric analysis of all of the publications that we've made. And the second was to go over the study design of each uh, of, each of the clinical case series that were performed. So to start off with, the identification was done by going into the Scopus database and searching for key terms um, from January 2000 till September 2021. After that, filters were applied, such as those of the subject as medicine in neuroscience, then just searching for case articles and reviews and including uh, English publications only. And as such, 42 documents were excluded. After that, we, uh, the 221 resulting uh, uh, publications were screened and not by the first author, Dr. Muhammad Ali, and 98 uh, documents were deemed unfit due to being not specifically related to PLC injury. This can often happen because when including the key terms, such as posterior and ligamentous and complex and injury, thoracolumbar and such, sometimes it can include stuff that could be completely out of, um, unrelated to this topic that we're talking about. Some of them were even ENT related. And uh, as such, 123 publications were used uh, for the study design and bibliometric analysis. Now, the, this resulted in a number of uh, over 54 case series, 31 review articles, some case reports, surveys, and so on. This is the topics that the bibliometric analysis uh, provided us with. First off was the publication trend from the year 2000 to 2001, which showed, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, which showed a, a sharp rise from around one publication from the year 2000 to 2003 per year to 17 in 2013 and decreasing from that point down, uh, onwards. 
This also resulted in an average of 5.6 publications uh, per year. And the most active countries and collaboration networks were uh, USA uh, in the first place with 62 publications, Canada with 16 and China with 12 and tied for third place were uh, South Korea, uh, Germany and Brazil. And this is a um, this is a bibliometric network. I'm sorry. This is a bibliometric network drawn by a program called Voss Viewer, which takes all of this database and presents it as a collaboration network between the different states. So the size of the node um, or the circle is determined by the amount of publication and the relatedness of each of these uh, countries is determined by how close these or how strong the communication or collaboration network is between these countries. This is the top 10 most active institutes. Uh, predominantly, Thomas Jefferson University came in the first place with 58 publications, followed by University of Calgary with 12 and University of Toronto with 11. And this is a summary of the most contributing journals with Spine coming in at first place with 18 publications. European Spine Journal coming in second place with 13 and the Spine Journal with six. The Spine had the highest citation per document count and uh, the Spine Journal had the highest impact factor with 5.166 or 4.4.166, sorry. And this is a list of the most prolific authors and co-authorship. And it comes as no surprise that Vaccaro from Thomas Jefferson uh, Jefferson University came in first place with 28 documentations, which makes around 20% out of the entire uh, publication count. And in second place came in Harap uh, JS with 12 publication and then Anderson DJ with 10. Um, most of the publications came of the top 20 publications came out of the USA and Thomas Jefferson University had uh, six of the most prolific authors. And this is also a co-authorship network map of authors. Due to time restraints, I would like to explain it more, but I, I wouldn't be able to right now. And this is the uh, wrong title, but this is a list of the 15 most published or in most, most cited articles. With the, with the TLEX classification coming in at first place, followed by the AO classification. And as for the study design, I'll just ask for 30 more seconds to go over it quickly. But this is a sunburst diagram about all the different sub, uh, subject types that we talked about and article types. And I would like to focus more on the case series, which was predominated by diagnostic accuracy with 29 diagnostic accuracy publications. Uh, most of them uh, with, uh, with the uh, subtopic of uh, being focused on MRI uh, diagnostic accuracy, followed by CT parameters and CT qualitative assessment. Um, afterwards, uh, I would like to talk about the sample size. So we can see that most of the publications had a sample size of less than 50 and that only 35% had between 50 and 100 and that less than 20% or 11 publications had a sample size of greater than 100. And these were the, uh, the authors with the largest uh, sample size documents. And this is a quick table that shows uh, or bar chart that shows that most of the studies were uh, single uh, from a single center. Only one study was multi-centered and was retrospective in nature. While uh, for the single centered studies, most of them were retrospective with 39 publications. And uh, thank you. I would I wanted to go over the discussion period, but I think I'm running out of time. Thank you very much.